Hello, my name is Brent Reed, and I am an assistant professor at the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy and a member of the Atrium Cardiology Collaborative. Today I'll be covering the concept of cardiac afterload, which is part of our series on advanced heart failure. Now recall the determinants of cardiac output are heart rate and stroke volume. And stroke volume can be further divided into its three determinants, preload, cardiac contractility, and afterload. And today we'll be focusing on afterload. Well, afterload refers to the amount of resistance the heart must pump against when ejecting blood. And a major determinant of afterload is vascular resistance. Systemic vascular resistance refers to the impedance of flow imparted by the peripheral vasculature, whereas the pulmonary vascular resistance refers to the impedance of flow imparted by the pulmonary vasculature. Now, resistance is determined by measuring the difference in pressure, shown here as delta P, divided by blood flow. Now in cardiovascular hemodynamics, we're concerned about the difference in pressure between the arterial and venous systems divided by blood flow. So in more practical terms, the systemic vascular resistance, or SVR, equals the mean arterial pressure, or MAP, which represents the pressure of the arterial system, minus the right atrial pressure, or RAP, which represents the pressure exerted by venous return and all that's divided by blood flow, otherwise known as cardiac output. Now changes in vascular resistance are determined primarily by the diameter of blood vessels. The diagram here represents the cross-section of an artery displaying the space through which blood flows, which is known as the lumen, surrounded by the arterial wall. And the arterial wall is comprised of vascular smooth muscle, which can contract and relax based on neurohormonal signals from the body resulting in either vasoconstriction or vasodilation. Now vascular resistance is increased by vasoconstriction, which results in decreased forward flow, and vascular resistance is decreased by vasodilation, which results in increased forward flow. Now the relationship between afterload and stroke volume can be represented by the following graph. Here the x-axis represents SVR, or afterload, and the y-axis represents stroke volume or cardiac output. So as you can see, as SVR increases, stroke volume decreases slightly, leading to a decrease in cardiac output. Now patients with normal cardiac function can withstand significant increases in SVR without it compromising the cardiac output. However, patients with heart failure are very sensitive to changes in SVR and this sensitivity to SVR increases with the progression of heart failure, as shown here in a patient with severe heart failure. Now elevations in SVR are common in heart failure due to persistent activation of neurohormonal systems, such as the sympathetic nervous system and the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Afterload can therefore be reduced by using therapies that target these systems or by the use of direct vasodilators. These reductions in afterload can significantly reduce the amount of work required for the heart to eject blood, therefore improving cardiac output. Now, thank you, and that concludes our presentation on afterload.